Welcome to lesson 11 of the Swift UI to-do list app. We're gonna continue working on this app. We finally got our items showing up in the last lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna focus on deleting items. Before jumping in, hit that like button and let's continue. So in the last video, I couldn't get the delete button when we swipe on over on an item to be read and I realized one second after ending the recording of that video, uh, what mistake I was making there. So let's actually go and amend that. So we don't wanna actually change the background of this button. What we wanna change is the tint of the button. So if we change it and we make it red and you refresh your preview with a command option P and you drag on over, you'll see that we now have delete here. So beautiful, let's actually get this deletion working. So we already created a function called delete on our view model where we're passing in the item. So we should be able to simply uh, make this database deletion call. So let's import Firebase Firestore and let's actually get a reference to our database by saying Firebase, uh, rather Firestore.Firestore. And then we'll say database.collection in our users, in our document, we wanna put the user ID here, which we'll do in a second, we'll talk about that. In our collection of to-dos, we should have a document with a document ID that we're passing in. And we're gonna simply say, hey, go ahead and delete that. We don't need any callback because our Firestore query in our view is listening for live updates in our actual uh, collection path, everything should just seamlessly update and be magical. All right, so before we can actually give this a run, we need to put in a user ID here. Well, there's two options we have. We can pass this into our delete function, but that doesn't really make sense because then we have to hang on to user ID on the view. Well, but we're already passing user ID via our constructor into this Firestore query. So how do we actually get it into our view model? We can, of course, get it from the Firebase auth like we did elsewhere, but that's kind of redundant. So let's, let's think of a better way to do this. So instead of creating this state object like this, what I can actually do is I can define it here and we can actually assign it similar to how we're assigning items here. We can specify that our constructor here is going to take in a user ID I will say self.userID is user ID for our view model. And we're essentially going to uh, instantiate this view model for um, the state object in the constructor. So we'll say self underscore, once again, that property wrapper semantic is going to be a state object with the wrapped value uh, and the wrapped value here will be our view model concrete class. The user ID is user ID. So let's see if I can get this uh, get this cleaned up a little bit in terms of line breaking because it's a little wonky right now. All right, so that's basically what we want to do. So what we're essentially doing is is instead of creating the view model um, as a stored member on this view, we're going to create it by creating a state object like so and passing in that view model with the associated user ID that we're getting through this views initializer. Um, hopefully that's not too confusing. The syntax might be a little confusing, but more or less we're putting the user ID into this view model. Awesome, so now that we've got the user ID in here, we can actually use it uh, in our deletion call. So yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Good practice, we're gonna hit command uh, option backslash to get this autocomplete for documentation. And we're just gonna add some docs, some comments here. And this is going to say delete to do list item. Let's make sure we spell that right. And this is going to be item ID to delete just like that. And uh, let's see if we can get this working. All right, let's build and run to a simulator. Let me add in a couple elements here. So maybe we'll say go running. We'll save this guy, we should see it pop up. Maybe we'll also come in here and say, uh, buy a jacket, because it is indeed raining out, and I could do it with a new jacket. Also going on vacation soon, so maybe we can say plan vacation fun things. All right, let me save that. 
All right, so we're good to go. So let's try deleting some stuff. So I'm gonna say, let's say we already bought some eggs. So we don't need this anymore. So I'm gonna drag this over and hit delete and boom, it's, it's gone. So let's try to close and reopen this app and that should not come back. All right, so definitely does not come back. Let's delete the rest of these. All righty, all righty, let's delete all of these. Apparently I'm done with everything that I needed to do because there's nothing left here. Let's close the app and reopen it. Whoops, that's the other version of the app. Let's open this one here that we're building and nothing indeed comes back. So we've successfully set up deletion of to-do list items. Just to recap, we pass in our user ID into our view model for the to-do list view at this point. We've implemented the delete function to uh, more or less just delete the record at the path of users, user ID, to-dos, and then the ID of the to-do list item that we would like to delete. Back in our to-do list view, we now assign the view model rather than having it already created up here. It is a state object where the wrapped value is our view model type, passing in the user ID. We amended our button in the swipe action to use a tint rather than a background. That's how we actually get it to show up as red. And we finally got deletion working. So that is all I've got in this video. We are gonna work on hitting that done button, the little um, check mark on the right of an item in the next part. So let's actually end this video with a new element here. So we wanna get groceries, not grocers. So let's create that. We'll make this little circle over here interactive in the next part. So I'll catch you all there.